Okay, on towards the next session, ladies and gentlemen, uh, building a scalable real-time video analytics system using open source technologies. And to present this session, uh, Ashish Batwara, Head of Engineering, Streaming Data and Analytics Platform at Dell. Uh, Ashish is currently responsible for building streaming data and analytics platform, uh, DSP, a platform allowing ingestion, storage, and analytics uh, for both real-time and historical data, all the way from micro edge to edge to cloud. Uh, bootstrapped um, multiple software teams to a sizable number and delivered four first-generation software products. We're still talking about this. Uh, he has also authored several uh, patents and uh, played multiple technology roles, ladies and gentlemen. Ashish Batwa. Thank you, Vineet. Uh, just confirm that you can hear me. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Ashish. And we can see and your you can screen. See screen. So, yes, yes, please. Thank you. Can I start or you want to wait for Yes, a please. No, please, please go ahead. Start. All right. Good. Um, good afternoon. My name is Ashish Batwara, Head of Engineering, Streaming Data and Analytics Platform at Dell Technologies. Today, I'll talk about building a real-time video analytics systems using open source technologies. According to IDC, the install base of a storage capacity is insufficient to store all the video data created in 2020. For example, the video telemetry is overwritten on an average of 31 times per year, or roughly every 12 days. That means it is super important that we have a system that can retain and truncate the data as needed. According to markets and market research, the global video analytics market is expected to grow from $5.9 billion to $14.9 billion by 2026. Almost every industry segment is driving this growth. You name it, BFSI, education, hospitality, entertainment, manufacturing, retail, transportation, and logistics, you just name it. Every industry segment is uh, driving the growth of video analytics market. Considering this, there is an increasing need for a video analytic solution. All right, let's talk about uh, what I'm going to talk about today. Today, I plan to cover four topics. First, I will talk about what I mean by video analytics. The second, the key open source software components of a video analytic system. Third, how does an end-to-end -end video data pipeline look like? And finally, I will have a demonstration showcasing a product combining these open source technologies to build a scalable real-time video analytics system. My focus will be on the real-time video analytics aspect. However, the same system can also be used for historical video analytics. So let's jump on to what I mean by video analytics. You'll see a picture here. I will be following that picture throughout the presentation and I will be highlighting the component that I am talking about, like the camera or the record or the store, the inference, store metadata and play and visualize. So let's jump on to what I mean by video analytics. A video analytics is an application of machine learning that involves automatically identifying temporal and spatial events in a live or a recorded video and transform these events into an actionable insight. A few key components or a few key points that come to my mind. One, it analyzes several images in succession instead of a single image. It processes many objects per frame and their movement across frames. It allows more insights by pairing IoT sensor data with video streams. Video surveillance, object detection, face recognition, traffic monitoring, traffic, smart cities, smart parking, are all examples of video analytics. Let's move on to the, the key open source software components of a video analytics system. We can classify these components into five major categories. Video camera, that includes both hardware and software aspect. However, I will be primarily focusing on the key software aspects of a video camera during this presentation. The second, the software components involved in video recording. And, where you, and you see on screen, I have highlighted the components that I'll be talking um, in this presentation. But however, there are other components that can be used with the same system. The third, a video storage, which is super important because you have to store the video data. 
you need storage. The fourth, AI inference engine and analytic software to inference, aggregate, and transform these video data. And fifth, the software to visualize and explore video data and a player that can play the video streams. Let's start exploring each component in detail. Video camera, there are three main components of a video camera from software point of view. The video codec, that stands for compression and decompression. The most widely used codec is H.264. And there are three important frames to talk about. The iframes, which we call as a, uh, the key frames. These frames are least compressible and they do not require other video frames to decode. They are self-sufficient on their own. The P frames, which is predicted frames, they are more compressible and can use data from previous frames. The B frames, which we call as a bi-directional frames, these can get the highest amount of data compression and can use both previous and forward frames for data reference. However, these are most compute intensive. The second most important component is the container format. It's kind of a box car carrying the compressed video data uh, in it. And here I am highlighting the component that we'll be talking about will be using in our demonstration. However, it doesn't mean that the system cannot work or with other protocols or, the, or you know, these other protocols also uh, can be used. The third component is RTSP, which we call as a real-time streaming protocol, most widely used low latency protocol, especially used with IP cameras. RTSP utilizes two network communication uh, protocols, TCP and UDP. The TCP used mostly for the control commands and both TCP or UDP can be used for the video data. RTP stands for real-time transport protocol, which carries RTSP payload and can use both TCP or UDP. The HLS, which is mostly used for live streaming, right? Which we name is, which we call as the HTTP live streaming protocol that supports media servers, media players, web browsers and mobile devices. It supports adaptive bitrate streaming. This is the most widely used protocol for live streaming. It started by Apple. It prefers quality over latency and most secure protocol. However, the, the, the one downside of this protocol is that it is not for ingestion. It is only for playing uh, or streaming. Let's move, on. Let's move on to the second component and you will be following at the bottom of the, the, the slide, right? Now we are talking about the record, right? The component highlighted in green. So for video recorder, we are using GStreamer. GStreamer is a framework that links multiple processing elements, such as data sync, data source in a pipeline to create media applications. It also provides APIs to write applications such as video player, media servers, video management servers, DVRs, using the various plugins. For example, today, GStreamer has more than 2000 plugins from several, uh, from several companies, several communities. GStreamer can also be used to transcode a media file, converting the form, from one format to the other format. It supports all major operating systems such as Linux, Windows, Mac OS, Android, iOS. It supports major hardware architecture, including x86, MIPS, ARM, PowerPC, Spark, etc., and the GStreamer applications can be written in several languages such as Python, C, C++, Rust, Java, and many more. One important aspect is that it removes the RTP header coming in from video camera and adds the MP4 container. In our case, it continuously captures video from a network camera and writes to a fragmented MP4 file. Here you can see the last component of this uh, recorder is the video sync. And that is what they expect from different uh, storage providers or vendors that you know, implement their own storage solution. And we'll be talking about a solution, something similar here. Uh, last but not least on this, you can see how simple a command pipeline look like. GST launch is an available tool that can be used to establish this pipeline. The first parameter that you see here is a, a camera source. The second parameter is, is the encoding that is expected. The third is the sync where the data uh, is going in. And the final parameter is the actual location of the video file. 
where the data is needs to be stored. Let's jump on to the video sync. As you saw in the previous slide, right, that it expects a video sync plugin from the storage vendors. We have implemented video sync. We name is a Pravega sync. I will be talking more about Pravega in subsequent slides. So there are there are a few key things here. Uh, the Pravega sync basically writes a video to a Pravega byte stream, which we call as a video data stream. The second is it the Pravega sync while the video data is coming from camera, it also Pravega sync also writes its own auxiliary Pravega stream, showing uh, storing the index to enable efficient seeking, and we call this as a video index stream. Every time, every frame stores a timestamp, which is a 64 byte nanosecond, 64 bit nanosecond since 1970. The Pravega sync is written in Rust language and uses the Pravega Rust client. It's an open source with Apache license. It can be used to write video and audio encoded as a fragmented MP4. The most important thing, uh, I would say one of the important things that, uh, that I talked about, retention is super important uh, for in case of video solutions. And Pravega Sync applies and enforces the retention policy by truncating the video data and index streams. Let's move on to the third important component, which is a store. You can see at the bottom of this, we are following this, that picture. So here we are talking about the Pravega. The Pravega provides a storage abstraction, a stream for continuous and unbounded data. Pravega is a cloud native open source stream data storage under CNCF. The key Pravega features, uh, there are many more, but I will be talking about key Pravega features that are relevant for this discussion. It provides elastic append only unbounded infinite number of streams. It provides a permanent and efficient long-term storage for historical reads. It provides low latency durable atomic write. It allows live and historical data playback. It, it enables configurable data retention based on size or the age. Indexed streams that we'll be talking a little bit in detail are used to, to enforce retention. And one last important thing is the byte stream and event stream. So it supports both byte stream and event streams. Byte stream allows data to be accessed randomly at any byte offset. And where the event stream allows parallel writes and parallel reads. Now let's talk about the data format in the video data and the index streams. So here you see on the slide, uh, the, the format of the video data. You can see the two, uh, two packets uh, side by side. So each camera records two Provega byte streams, the video data and video index we already talked about. The video data payload, which is the last, com last uh, 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 cell here, right? Which can be anywhere between zero to eight megabyte. Even if it's a large, the more larger than eight megabyte, we chunk it. Um, and then it has a twenty bytes of header, eight bytes timestamp, four bytes flag, four bytes for event length, and then four bytes are reserved. Um, the ne next is the index streams, right? So it is generated by the Pravega sync itself. It writes a twenty byte index into the video index stream at, in Pravega. The index entry, each index entry is twenty bytes. Uh, eight bytes of byte offset into the video data frame, four by, uh, eight bytes of timestamp and four bytes of flag. On, we only index keyframes. We don't index P frames or the B frames. The index stream is used for seeking and building an HTTP live streaming PL playlist, which is a HLS play playlist. And important functionality, uh, one of the important functionalities that that, that index stream plays is that it allows truncation of data right at an atomic boundary. We use this for uh, for that purpose. The important aspect, we write this entire payload uh, in an atomic fashion. So you might be wondering, you know, why Pravega? Why not ordinary files? Why not object store? Right? So take an example of ordinary files. The GStreamer has plugins for reading and writing ordinary files, like the file source and the file sync are the plugins available. But there are challenges with concurrent reads and writes of ordinary files with this. If, for example, file source, which is a plugin, it encounters an end of file, the pipeline terminates regardless of buffering. It has no mechanism to wait for additional data or to pull the file. 
many file formats require the file to be completely written before they can be played. This is usually this is usually the case for files that contain an index. And also, the most file stores do not have atomic rights or allow data to be read before data to be read before it has been fully written. Similarly, object score, object store, right? By nature, video data is a continuous stream of data. Using object score store directly would require a video data to be chunked. This also requires a custom logic on both reader and writer side. And that will add large end-to-end -end latencies and also make recovery from a crash or restart very complicated. Similarly, Pravega um, allows uh, industry standard S264 video and audio in a standard MP4 container. The other messaging systems require different workarounds and yet can't achieve the 20 millisecond latency that Pravega can provide. So, so three important aspects of Provega, why we have used Provega. Provega provides low latency, durable atomic write. So restarting after a crash is trivial. Provega supports retention and can truncate the oldest data from the streaming without compromising with the data format. And last but not least, Provega supports, supports efficient seeking using index streams. All right, let's talk about uh, the, 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 the auxiliary component of Pravega, right? Pravega source. That means you, so far we are able to write into the Pravega in terms of video data and video index streams. Now we need something to read the data so that we can use it for inference and aggregation and, uh, and further analytics. You can see on the, on, on the slide here that there is an a, a inference uh, the pipeline that we need to build using the GFG streamer. So let's talk about the Pravega source that is used for reading the data from Pravega video data and index streams. It reads video from the video data and index streams. It provides low end-to-end -end latency uh, with the tail reads of approximately 20 millisecond. It seamlessly transitions from historical to live playback. And last but not least, it's efficient in seeking and range queries using the video index. Let's jump right into the, 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 the next fourth component, important component is which is inference. And you can see that we continue to build this pipeline, right? From the camera to the recorder to the store and now the inference. And for the inference, we use NVIDIA's DeepStream. DeepStream is built around GStreamer. It provides a variety of GStreamer plugins such as GPU accelerated H264 decoder, encoder, DeepStream learning, learning inference, et cetera. It requires a protocol adapter, right, from, from different plugins. And in case of Pravega, we have built Pravega protocol adapter, which is something similar to the Kafka adapter or Azure IoT adapter, et cetera. So there are a few important aspects of Pravega protocol adapter. It provides an implementation of NVIDIA DeepStream message broker. Existing DeepStream applications only need to modify their configuration to use web Pravega. They don't need to modify anything else, just the configuration and use Pravega for the purpose of, uh, uh, of storing the inference data. The Pravega protocol adapter is used to write metadata such as inferred bounding boxes to Pravega stream. It is not intended to write video or audio data. That you, for that, you can use you know, Pravega sync or Pravega source. Uh, uh, to write the data, you can use Pravega sync. And it's written in the Rust language uh, as any other sync and source for Pravega. Let's jump, let's go into more detail about the inference, right? So here the sample data that you see is related to the object detection. So a video data come in and it goes through the, the recorder, goes to the store, and it goes through the inferencing through the NVIDIA deep stream, right? And after it, after object detection, for an example, like one of the um, in inference, right? It stores the, it basically creates a metadata. And we store the metadata in Pravega uh, stream. And we have created a metadata JSON stream, which is a separate stream just for the metadata. And the original video data and, uh, and video index still remains there. So now what we are doing here is we have, we have, we have the, the whole camera data has gone through the inference and we have the metadata here. In the, in the metadata, you can see here, we are highlighting the camera ID, the timestamp, the object into which uh, which is a vehicle in this case with the make, model, 
color and license tag number, etc. And the important part is the bounding boxes. That means the DeepStream SDK is able to identify the object of interest and one uh, was able to create you know, top left X and Y coordinates and the top right or the bottom right X and Y coordinates. Let's talk about, you know, furthermore, you know, now you can see here, you, it's not just one single pipeline. Each camera can have its own independent pipeline. So you can, the, the system is scalable to have thousands and hundreds of thousands of pipeline, parallel pipelines, right? But you can, important thing you can see here is a single Provega instance is sufficient to handle, you know, many such pipelines. You can see under, under storage and under aggregation. Each camera is using dedicated uh, GStream pipeline for the inference here. The inference metadata JSON for multiple cameras is written to a dedicated metadata stream that you can see on the under aggregation and you can see a single metadata JSON coming from two different uh, camera pipelines here, GStream pipelines here. It can be used for you know, hundreds of these such cameras and such pipelines, right? And for analytics, you can use GSpark or Flink uh, on the aggregated metadata. And all the streams here that you see on the right side, video data and video index for both the camera pipelines are the byte streams, where the JSON is an event stream that is in Pravega. Let's move on to the next thing, right? The play and the visualize, right? We are using the Jupyter here is, uh, for visualization and data exploration. We'll cover more about this during our demonstration. Uh, I think this is the last slide uh, for before we start the demo. And here, what you can see is the Provega video player. This is part of the, we are following the bottom most picture here, like camera record, store, inference, store. And now the last one is the play and visualize. Like the Provega video player is a simple G streamer application that allows playback of live or historical video using a slider. The index stream is which we create in the Pravega sync is used for seeking and building an HTTP live streaming playlist. Also, Pravega also provides a Pravega video server, which is an HTTP live server for playback from a browser. And you can use this for historical and live playback and seeking. Well, okay, one more slide. So uh, before we jump onto the demo. So here, this slide, what I tried to do is I tried to cover both video aspect and the non-video aspect. Right? And you can see at the bottom of the picture, you know, the same Pravega can be used to stream the data from an IoT sensor, right? And it can use several proto industry standard protocols such as MQTT or REST, right? To ingest the data from IoT. And then you can do a correlation between the video data and the non-video data and can do a, a, you know, an aggregated and correlated analytics. And we'll be covering that as part of our demonstration. With that, let me uh, let me start uh, uh, the demo. Let me share a different screen here for the demo. Um, can you see the screen here for the demo? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay, right. So let's talk about the demo. So what you are seeing on the screen is um, a streaming data and analytics platform at Dell that combines all these open source uh, solutions. Uh, that is used for ingestion, storage, and analytics. Uh, and analytics include the aggregation and the visualization, et cetera. So there are two parts of the demo. The first part is going all the way from the data ingestion from a camera to, uh, to basically uh, uh, to the object detection. And the second part of the demo will be covering about uh, uh, the, the aggregated analytics and then combining the video data and non-video data uh, for the analysis, for the correlation. So here you can see the bytes read and bytes written right from a video camera. Let's jump on to the next portion of the demo. And, and here uh, you see uh, that I have created an example project for the video ingestion. The next portion is, you can see here, this platform supports multiple analytics engines like Flink, Spark, Provega Search. And we will be talking, we will be focusing on this demo uh, during this demo for the video part. And you can see here is the video component, video tab here. And for the video, what you can see is here, we have created a G-Streamer pipeline. 
the GCMR pipeline that I described, it goes all the way from camera to record to store to inference and even all the way to even uh, uh, visualize. Now you can see here, there are multiple cameras uh, and there are multiple, uh, 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 multiple streams here. So two important aspects, one is that, uh, that the raw stream, which will be showing uh, the raw video data coming in from camera. And the next one is uh, the, the stream after the object detection. We'll be talking more about those two. So if, here, if you take a look at uh, in this, uh, so here is the live stream coming in from, uh, from, the, from a highway. And the important part that you would notice here is the same stream can be, you can, you can go back and, and rewind the stream and you can go, you go live as well. And the next thing that we'll be showing here is the stream that is after the object detection. And here you can see that NVIDIA's DeepStream SDK, is, which is plugged into this platform, can detect these cards as an object, right? And, and basically can create the coordinates uh, uh, around and create the bounding boxes around this car. So now, so that's the first part of the demo, right? Where we have looked at the, the live data ingestion from real cameras and then the object detection, right? And uh, including the coordinates and bounding boxes around the objects. So the second part of the demo is basically where we will use the Spark to aggregate and analyze the inferred data. We'll also use Spark to analyze the correlated video and non-video data. We are, also, we are using Jupyter Notebook for this purpose. We'll so here you can see here we are importing the necessary uh, uh, modules and, and then preloading the, the prerequisites. We are initializing and configuring a Spark and Provega. The next part of the demo is here we are showing um, okay so here we are showing um, let's say uh, okay so here we are showing the top 20 raw events from camera from provega video stream the first col column is the raw event metadata the second column is the provega scope third one is the stream name the fourth one is the segment ID where the data is getting stored. And then the offset within the segment, the last column. These are, they are pretty much the raw data coming in from, from video camera. And here you can see on the screen that total we have 1.6 million events, right? For coming from, so as part of this sample that we have created. Let's, join, let's zoom into an, a specific event here. So you can see this is a specific event uh, uh, after the object detection. And here, what you see is uh, uh, the, the, the message, the timestamp, the location of the camera. Um, now coming to the, uh, the, the, the object that is detected, which is the vehicle, the make and model and the color license. And then important thing is the bounding boxes after the detection of the object, right? So the coordinate of the, uh, the, the top left X and Y coordinates and the bottom right X and Y coordinates. So after we after we determine that after we detect this object, let's talk about um, what we do with this. So uh, so here, what you can see on the screen that we have processed these objects detected they detected these objects objects and we put these objects into our metadata JSON event streams, right? That includes the the location, the timestamp, and the number of vehicles. Uh, uh, during that time. Now let's move on to the next set of the demo. And here, what you can see, um, and here, what you can see is uh, the, the, the location of the camera and the timestamp and the total number of vehicles in that frame uh, uh, at that moment is stored in the event stream. Now what we are going to do here, we are going to uh, we are going to aggregate these frames, right? Every ten second interval. Here, what you see on the screen is the aggregation. So what what we are seeing here is that total number of vehicles detected, right? Uh, on an average uh, every ten seconds in a particular frame. So you can see here is uh, five point six four six point two uh, on an average. Uh, vehicles detected every 10 seconds 
uh, uh, by the NVIDIA video streams, uh, Deep Stream SDK. Now let's talk about uh, the non-video data. So we have also placed a vibration sensor next to the video camera so that we can detect, you know, how the vibration on the road is, right, while the cars are coming in here. So we have used the Spark to, uh, to join these IoT sensor data and the detected uh, uh, metadata stream and, 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 and try to establish a correlation between uh, the number of cars and the vibration. So after using the Spark uh, here, what you can see here, uh, sorry, uh, okay, this, this screen is showing uh, just the aggregated cumulative value of the number of cars seen by per camera. So uh, green is shown by the one camera, the white is shown by the other camera, and the orange is shown by the third camera. And the next one is the joining the camera, uh, the video camera data with the IoT sensor data that is uh, used for uh, correlation between the vibration and the, the number of cars on the road. So after analyzing this video data and the IoT sensor data, which is the vibration data here, that you can see here, the more the number of cars, the more the vibration is. For example, in the first case, right, the number of vehicles is 10, and you can see the vibration score is higher than the vibration score with the last number of cars. And finally, we correlated this information that, that you know, the more the number of cars, the more the number, the more the higher the vibration is. And that is clearly visible in this last picture uh, where you can see the number of vehicles on the right and the x-axis and the vibration, corresponding vibration on the y-axis. So let me just recap in terms of what we, what we talked about. Um, So what we are talking about, the Pravega provides uh, the required plugins for GStreamer and DeepStream to, uh, to basically to support end-to-end -end video analytics. Also, streaming data analytics platform is a, is a, is a product from Dell that combines these uh, different open source components to analyze, to, in, to basically ingest, store, and analyze these video stream and even non-video stream data from IoT sensors. With that, I would like to, uh, to thank you for attending this call and open for any question and answer. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you. We'll just wait for, for the audience to send in any questions. Let's give them a few seconds. Typically, sure. people ask the questions as soon as the uh, uh, person stops talking. So give them a few seconds. If there are no questions, then I will let you know. Uh, audience, wherever you are in the world, uh, this is a good time to ask any questions of Mr. Batwala. Ashish, just give me a second. I'm looking at my screen to check if there are any questions coming in. Sure. Thank you very much for that lovely presentation. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, I think there is one question coming in. Yeah, so I think the question is, what are yeah. the probable use cases for this software? Yeah. yeah. Think of a, a, an example could be a manufacturing use case, right? Where you have the camera focused on the machine, machine different machines, right? And the parts are getting produced, right? So you can have uh, these cameras basically finding out if there is any malfunctioning part resulting into bad part getting produced. You can immediately uh, uh, detect if there is any problem and then you can uh, you can use it to, uh, to alert and stop the manufacturing pipeline. There's another question there if you'd like to take that, please. How about image classification? So, so basically, you know, this is a platform that is the, the same pipeline can be used. It all depends on, uh, you know, the, your classification algorithm that you can that you can use with GStreamer. Like for example, for DeepStreamer SDK that provides its own machine learning model that we have used for object detection and you know encoding decoding. So similar, uh, you know, if there is any plugin like that uh, can be used for uh, for the image classification. The platform is uh, uh, is you know allows that. 
and also okay. uh, image yeah. classification is also a subset of uh, uh, object detection. Thank you very much for asking those questions, dear audience. And uh, thank you very much for answering. I'm still looking at any other questions coming in. I think there are no more questions now, Mr. Bhutwala. Yep. Thank you, Ashish, uh, thank for you very much. your time, your knowledge, and the hope that people like you, technologists create for the rest of us. So thank you very thank much you for very coming much. to NITC. Thank Bob you. Very much.